Hi guys, welcome back. Today I would like to start with doing a shout out to Nanda Kumar for leaving this suggestion. Can you do a review or video on a share like OCBC because he's looking for dividend ideas. And today I have this exact video for you. And not only that, I'll be doing OCBC versus STITF versus a Singapore fund. Because when you look to investing, you should look to compare across all possible ideas. And today's video is to address that specifically. So let's get started. The first thing about OCBC, if you look at dividends purely from dividend perspective, you realize that dividends have been growing pretty steadily. In 2007, it's doing 26 cents. As of last year, it did 48 cents. That's almost double in terms of dividend. So I have a previous video on how to select a high dividend share, high dividend stock. And definitely this is a good criteria, this is a good track record that OCBC has exhibited. So this is something that you might find interesting. OCBC is a pretty good dividend stock. And, but on, on the other hand, Analyzing OCBC is not so easy. Uh, in investing, a lot of times you need to know what you're good at as well as what you're not good at. You have to be honest with yourself. And, and from my perspective, I'm not too good with financial stock analysis because there's a few key parts where I don't quite understand what they're actually doing. So I'll share them further below. And the, the main message is learn a bit from this part and further your learning, especially if you're looking to invest in OCBC as a particular shareholding. So not only learn from here, learn from some other channels, learn from some other sources. Make sure you are totally familiar with what you're investing before you get started. And if not, you wouldn't be able to avoid like, you know, selecting a share like Lehman Brothers, which actually collapsed back in a uh, global financial crisis. So understanding what you actually own, especially for some, such a complex uh, share like a banking stock, that's where you, know, you really need to know the ins and outs. And uh, while understanding OCBC is not difficult, it's also not easy. Why do I say not difficult? The main thing is about this. OCBC is just a simple bank, just like any others, that takes your deposits, you put money with them, and with this deposit and a reserve ratio, they're able to create money to lend out. Very simple, right? Banks take in money, from there have a reserve ratio, and then lend out, and that is actually interest income. I'll pull for you to quickly see. OCBC has actually certain interest income that's been doing quite well. And not only do they earn from interest income, they also earn from non-interest income. And your question very naturally is, what is non-interest income? Non-interest income can come from brokerage, can come from uh, wealth management products such as unit trust, such as uh, insurance plans. These are wealth management products such as uh, structured products. Banks love to do structured products. Or in my opinion, structured products are, are very tricky for retail investors to fully understand. They are quite complex. But these are where banks make money. And these are the non-interest income sources that you really need to, you know, get around it because if not you're not familiar with the, the whole banking uh, way of doing things so not only that the next thing to understand about banks is they also have uh, a, a something called a casa a casa ratio which is a current account savings account whereby this actually is a way whereby analysts digs up whether they are making margins or not net interest margins on their money because your current account savings are actually cost very little to the bank to borrow from you and they can actually make a lot of money so over here, you can actually see that DBS has actually a, a much better ratio than OCBC. Maybe that is why the, the performance of OCBC has not been doing that well in comparison to DBS over the last one year. So this CASA ratio is something not a, a, a little bit further to understand whereby analysts are probably in a better position to dig up the books, dig up the accounting statements. Where layman, you and I, unless you are very well versed, it's not so easy to understand the trends of the CASA ratio of a particular stock like OCBC. What is it going to look like moving forward? And the next tricky part about uh, buying a bank stock, in my opinion, is you don't really know the geographical uh, projections moving forward. OCBC, as we know, is one of the top banks in Singapore. But what about its Wing Hang holdings? What about its uh, Malaysia, Vietnam exposure? Right now, as you can see over here, 57% comes from Singapore uh, revenue. Revenue comes 57% from Singapore. The rest, regionally, not too, not too familiar. We don't really know, or at least in my context, don't really know where they actually stand. So again, if you're not too familiar, you've got to know what you're good at, what you're not good at. If not, the, the very simple question is, why not buy an index? Because when you buy an index, you get exposure in OCBC. You, you see over here, in Singapore's STI index, OCBC is weighted at 12%. This number two in ranking, which means naturally when you buy STI ETF, you already have exposure into OCBC. Just in case you're not too familiar, just in case something goes wrong, share price plunge, you at least have that diversification factored in already. And I have a very simple uh, finding that I would like to share with you today, which is comparing versus funds. This one for STITF is using the Nico AM one. So I'm comparing versus Nico AM Singapore Dividend Equity Fund. So as we can see over here, which I'll pull out for you, 
you'll realize that OCBC is number three in terms of allocation by the Singapore Nico AM Shenton Singapore Dividend Equity Fund. What it means is the, the fund manager have, has actively allocated less to OCBC. Not only that, you see the top 10, top 10 holdings itself, you will not find Singtel in it. Instead, you'll find Wilma, which is one of the biggest agri producers. You'll find ST Engineering, whereby ST Aerospace is pretty big. So you would realize that with an active fund manager, they can actually outperform. And how it's actually done outperformance is, if you look at OCBC versus STI ETF, which I'll pull out for you to quickly see in this chart, you realize that OCBC has done slightly poorer than STI ETF, which means the rest of the top 10 holdings have done better. Fund manager may have actively allocated properly and delivered results for you. So your choice is between this. You can buy a banking share if you fully understand it. You can buy an ETF if you want low cost, you don't just diversify. Or if you believe a fund manager can deliver extra value for you, then that's where you choose the Singapore fund. So I hope I've answered your question. With that, leave in the comment section below what you still think is the best approach if you want to get invested in, for example, OCBC Bank or even DBS Bank. Do you think buying diversified or buying the exact banking share is a better approach? On the other hand, if you have further questions that you have, leave them in the comment section below because I look at each and every one of them and join our community to become more financially savvy by smashing the subscribe button. Invite all your friends who are also looking for these topics and help them also learn a bit better. With that, I'll sign off. I'll see you in a future video. Take care and goodbye.